So go ahead and tell us what's been your overall experience like working on Once Upon a Time. What's that been like for you? Oh, well, I mean, Once Upon a Time just in general obviously has been sort of a magical carpet ride, really. Um, you know, it, it was one of those shows where uh, I, I read the script and I thought, this is incredible, but I, it'll never work. It's just way too ambitious. They'll never be able to pull it off. And, and then they screened the pilot for us and, and um, we all were invited, the cast were invited to the screening room at William Morris and, and we all sort of sat there with our mouths wide open like, oh, oh my God, this is really something special. And, and, and it has been that, um, you know, really something special for... Uh, you know, now as we're finishing our third season, it's just been, in, it's just incredible. I mean, the, the, the writing is so uh, smart without being sort of um, too clever, and and the, the the actors to a person are just, I can say, just wonderful, wonderful people. Um, and, and um, you know, we, we, many of us are, uh, I mean, I'm not a regular on the show anymore. I'm, I'm there sort of as an irregular, as it were, um, but that said, you know, many of us when we first were up there were all kind of, uh, you know, relocated up there, and so we were each other's company and and, and really our, each other's community. And, and they're, I mean, they're just such good people, and and really care about the work, really care about doing good work, and and you really feel that on the set where you know people come in really really well prepared and and, and passionate about doing something that's um, that's top notch. And I and I and that's felt through all the departments. I mean. You know, every every department is is uh, you know from from uh, from the visual effect department to even the guys who park the cars. I, I had them pull me aside one day and say, you know, we love this show. Our full family loves this show, and I'm just so proud to be working on this show. It was so it was so sweet. Yeah. So I, I think we've all felt really uh, really proud and happy to be a part of it, and it's. Um, you know, found its audience, and, and it's obviously uh, looks to be on a full gallop for another season. Um, I'm, you know, it's not been announced officially, but I, I, I feel very confident that we'll be seeing more of this uh, in the years to come. Oh, that's great. Yeah, we've been watching since season one, and it just keeps getting better and better, you know, every episode. And it's like, you, you have to watch. It's become an addiction by far. It's like every episode's so good. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. I hear that. And then I also hear that people say, like, you know, it's the one show that our whole family can watch together. Yes. And, and I'm, I mean, I'm a dad, and, and I've got an 11-year-old who loves Harry Potter and, and is crazy about the show as well. And so it, it's, it's so, it's so, I've got a 9-year-old too, I don't want to leave him out of it. But, oh, but, yeah. but, uh, but, you know, just the fact that you can sit down and watch a show with your kids, there's so few of them that appeals both to an adult um, and, and then also, you know, still is equally as interesting to a, to a, to a younger, a younger set, and so it's, it's really, it, it's sort of uh, remarkable that way. I agree, and, and your kids must think you, they have the coolest dad, you know? You know, I'm still dad, I'm like, yeah, whatever, dad, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I think their friends think it's cool, but, you know, it's funny. I, I, I brought them up to the set, and I introduced them to, to Josh Dallas and to Ginny, and they, and they, we all, Jared and my kids, uh, you know, Jared and Prince Henry, um, we all went to uh, Disneyland together, and Jared's got a twin sister named Taylor, and so we all were pals. They, they kind of love that, and because um, uh, Jared's their age, and, you know, he's a little bit older than them, but they, 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 uh, they thought he was really cool. And, um, and you know, I think probably as they get older, they'll realize it's like, wow, that was kind of unusual. Um, but, but, you know, I think at the moment it's just, you know, it's your dad, it's my dad, it's what he did. Um, but it, it's sweet. <laughs> it's still very neat, very neat. Would they, like, have you ever mentioned them? Would they ever like to be on the show one day? You know, um, I, uh, uh, I go in at night when they're sleeping and I whisper, you know, things like architect and, you know, <laughs> <laughs> other other professions, you know, that don't involve being an actor. I, I if they want to be an actor, I, I, I would support it, of course, 100%. My, my son did a school play this year, and he loved it. Um, but I, um, it's one of those things where I, I would want it to come from them uh, as opposed to kind of encouraging them. Um, so thankfully at this point, they, my, my daughter's a math nerd, and, um, and, and my son 
uh, hasn't quite figured it out yet. So, so I'm I'm happy to sort of say that they're just being kids, and I, I sort of like that. Yeah, that's nice. That's good. Um, well, let yeah. tell us though if you were um, to be more involved with the show once upon a time, what would you like to see happen next with your character, if anything? Oh gosh, yeah. I mean, um, you know, one thing that they that they have have not quite explored yet, mm -hmm. and, and I don't know, you know, when or if they will, but but um, uh, because you know, in point of fact, actually. The, the stories for Once Upon a Time and the nuclear launch codes are kept in the same undisclosed location, so we, we don't have any idea what's coming uh -huh. next. But, um, um, but you know, it would, I've, a lot of fans have written and asked about Archie's love life and, you know, what what life is like. You know, a lot of people have asked about Pongo, yeah. um, the dog, and, and they love they love him and, and have expressed a lot of interest in sort of knowing what Pongo's backstory was and or also, you know, what Archie might be doing outside of, you know, when he's sort of being taking care of folks and, and giving them therapy and, and or just trying to be there for them. Um, so it would be interesting if they would if they would explore that. I'm not I'm not again I'm not there, there are so many there's huge trajectories that are set in place, obviously, each season. Um, when they um, uh, when they start a season, and, and obviously when you have things like you know Peter Pan, and then you've got now the you know uh, the, the, the the evil witch, you know um, uh, it, that's obviously sets in certain certain things in motion. But what what's been nice is that there's a few of us, you know, um, the Blue Fairy and and uh, Granny and um, uh, and then uh, Grumpy and and myself and the, some of the dwarves who I think represent the Faith Storybrooke still, and, and it seems from what I read on Twitter and, and when I do get to meet people, um, it means a lot to them, but the fact that Storybrooke is still holds a really, as many characters as, as have come and gone through the show, and obviously there have been so many, um, and there will continue to be, um, the, the, the folks who live in the little town called Storybrooke who kind of give it, give it its face, um, are important, and, um, and obviously, the, you know, the writers know that, and that's why they keep bringing us back, which is, which is been sweet. Definitely. We love the original characters by far. Um, have you had a favorite episode you filmed, like starting season one or, like, any episode? I mean, it would sound self-serving, but I guess it was a place where I really got to sort of do, you know, really kind of um, hit the ball on other bases. Um, it's uh, where, you know, the, um, um, the backstory for Jiminy Cricket was... was so fun, um, and 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 so many people came up to me afterwards and said, "God, I I didn't know that was Jimmy Cricket's backstory," which I was that was so uh, such a uh, sort of a compliment to the writers because they made it seem so seamless <laughs> and almost like so obvious. Um, and um, but I mean, uh, there have been so many wonderful different things that we've gotten to do, uh, you know, um, uh, with with various sort of uh, events that are, um, oh gosh, hold on a second here, did I get a ticket? Um, uh, so, so many things that have been able to kind of give us a, um, uh, you know, running around or saving Storybrooke or doing various things. So, um, it's, it's been a, it's been a, um, uh, there's so many now, it's amazing when you think about it, how many, I mean, we're going into the, to our 60 some odd, 60, you know, 70th episode, um, that is, you know, the story starts to kind of, is, I, I, I think I've, I've forgotten a whole bunch of things that we've even done at this point, but I, I, I just love being a part of, again, this, this show, which has, you know, at its heart, um, a, it's just a, a magical way of telling, retelling stories so that we feel like we have, um, we, we know them, they seem familiar to us, yeah. and then um, they uh, surprise us. So it, it's sort of a, it, it, it's an incredible uh, uh, sort of, I don't know, formula for, for their success. Uh, and, and, and they, they do it over and over again. It really is, and you know what, like you said, it is a lot to keep up with, because if you haven't seen any of the episodes and you're just tuning in now, it's like you really have to, like, know what's going on constantly, you know what I mean, so. Yeah, that's the, that's the, that's the hard thing about it, was people we'll say, oh, I haven't watched, I haven't seen that show, and I say, oh, well, it's not really a show you want to check out, but it's a show you want to 
to jump into, you know. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, that's funny, you know, thank God there's Netflix um, I know. or Hulu, and, and you can go back and kind of um, sort of just step into it. But but then when I when I said, said to people, like, you know, if you like Harry Potter or if you love those kind of magical stories, you know, take a look, and then invariably people come back and say, I've started it. I love it. I'm totally addicted now. Yeah. And, and, and I've met people at, at cons. I do, uh, you know, voices for um, video games, uh, some of these video games uh, that have been very popular, like Mass Effect and stuff. And, and some people have told me, you know, I only started watching because of you, because I know you from these video games. And, uh, and, and you know what? Now I'm crazy about it, and I'm so glad I found it. So um, it, 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 it's, it's fun um, the, the way people have discovered it. But, again, it's just so great that with the way we get to watch TV now, which is sort of more on demand, um, that that you can you can watch real time and sort of enjoy the kind of immediacy of it by watching a uh, you know a sports event or something. But you can also um, sort of watch it you know as a um, uh, you know whenever you want, or go back and visit your favorites. I I know people who when the show is not airing like over the summer, where they said they went back and sort of binge watch. I binge watched the first two seasons, you know, and yeah. I, I'm so ready for season three, you know, that kind of thing, which is sweet. But you know what? Even when you rewatch the episodes, it's like you're watching a, a new show again because you never get sick of them and never gets old, so it's it's all new again. You know what I mean? And you kind of forget about the past episodes, so it's kind of like rewatching it, and it's just great. So. That's really cool. There's a lot of depth in the story, and and so much depth in the frame as well. I mean, it's beautifully shot, and the production team is so strong. The costumes are incredible. The sets. So, so there's just a lot to see. Well, but, you know, if, if you had a, as a fan of the show, because cause you are obviously a journalist, but also clearly um, someone who really knows the show so well, what, what kinds of things, look at a question back to you, what kinds of things would you like to know about um, R.T. Jiminy Cricket, I guess, that haven't been explored? You're the only one who pretty much has faith in Regina constantly. So we'd like to see more of you and Regina interact in these future episodes coming up. You know what I mean? So we like that. Oh, that's great. That's great. I, I know also people sort of say that they, they love that he holds sort of the conscience of a storybook, as, uh, yes. you know, in a way as well. So, and everyone else is so troubled. I mean, if you really started sort of doing therapy for everyone, you talk about job security, right? <laughs> exactly, all of Storybrook. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Wait, Line up, right? <laughs> Take <I know>. it over. <laughs> your, your character is the best, though. They really need you on the show, like, constantly. So everybody definitely needs to support Archie here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Definitely. Um, um, are you keeping up with the episodes now with Zelina being involved? Do you, do you watch all the episodes? You know, um, I'm a little behind. Um, uh, I haven't, because I've been working on this new show, so I have to say is I've, I've had my head a little bit elsewhere, but I, I've read a bunch of the scripts, and I haven't seen them sort of all finalized. But I've, um, I mean, I, I know what's going on, but I haven't seen them sort of completed. So um, it's pretty, it's pretty uh, exciting and dynamic. Uh-huh. What also, what current projects are you working on now? Well, um, I, uh, what happened was when they, um, uh, you know, after I was uh, basically moved into sort of this recurring position on the show, uh, what that sort of allowed me to do is kind of look for some other possibly more permanent work. But um, I've gotten a situation that made me sort of the best of both worlds. So I'm doing a new show uh, for TNT called Murder on the First. Mm-hmm. And um, it's a Stephen Bochco show, um, so it's a cop drama um, about as far as far away from storybook as you can possibly get. Uh-huh. And uh, and what happens is um, the um, uh, it's got an amazing cast. It's one case over the whole season, so it, it's for TNT. It airs in June, June 9th is I guess the premiere. Um, and I can send you, or someone can send you the the, um, the trailer if you want it. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. It's got a wonderful cast. Oh, um, that would be great. Kate Diggs, um, Kathleen Robertson, uh, Tom Felton from uh, Harry Potter. Oh, wow. Uh, then James, Crom- James Cromwell, Richard Schiff from West Wing, um, uh, Stephen Weber from Wings. So a lot of wonderful people. But anyway, I, I play a detective, and I'm a regular on the show, and we, they are you know, doing 10, 10 episodes uh, for the first season. Um, and if we're lucky enough to do a second season, we'll see where it goes. But, but anyway, I've been able to do a bit of both. So I've been able to sort of do some work on uh, Once Upon a Time 
as well as then also then doing the murder the first. So I, I, I'm in this incredible, uh, extraordinary position of, of sort of, uh, I don't know. I just I, I just walk around being very grateful. Yeah, that's the both <laughs> that worlds here. Yeah, that's exciting. We're excited for that. Yeah, thank you. I'm I'm really I'm really pleased. I'm really pleased. Thank and, you. And if people don't realize your acting resume is actually literally never ending, which is phenomenal and so impressive, <laughs> it really is. I mean, you can scroll down on IMDb and it just keeps going and going. That's that's great. Oh. Um, how do you feel you yeah. accomplished so much? I, I mean, I, I, I'm. It, it, I, someone said to me on Twitter that they thought I was the Where's Waldo of actors. Cause uh, they like, you know, once they know, once they know of you, you seem like you pop, pop up all the time. Yeah. You know? um, yeah, it's sweet. I mean, I'm. I'm. Uh, uh, you know, I've, I've been. I, I, I started very young. My mother and father were in the business. My, my dad was a playwright at Yale, and my mother was a costume designer, um, uh, also at Yale. And then they, you know, were in the theater. And then I was on Sesame Street when I was four. Um, it was the first year Sesame Street, uh-huh. and they, they were just looking for kids, and I just happened to be there, and then I, I did plays, um, you know, starting at about seven, and then when I was uh, about 13, at the right age of 13, decided that I wanted to be an actor, and I was living in New York, and with public transportation, and, and uh, uh, the way they were able to sort of do it is that I would sort of get on my bike and go to my auditions, or, you know, get on public transit, use my bus pass from school, and, and go over to see my agent, or whatever, so um, I, I did it on my own, and, and and I've been doing it now for you know what four decades over four decades. So it, it, it's been it's been great that I've been able to actually make a career. I, I like I say I, again, I I feel uh, very grateful for the opportunities that have come my way, and and just the fact that I can keep working and, and the opportunities keep coming my way. It's just it's been amazing. Yeah, definitely, and I think that really helped you that you started at such a young age that you got your head start, you know what I mean? So that was good. Yeah, it, it can. I mean, sometimes child actors don't transition well. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, sometimes they, they kind of grow up and, you know, they just don't quite, they aren't as cute as they were when they were little kids or they suddenly their priorities change or, you know, it just doesn't seem like something they want to do or they just get bored of it, um, and, and, and all of those you know, or sometimes they just stop being able to work um, for whatever combination of reasons. Things that worked when you were 10 don't work as well when you're 17. Right. Um, and so you have to kind of learn how to sort of in a way kind of reinvent yourself a bit. So, um, uh, you know, I, I also teach, and, and, and one of the things that I, I, I um, one of the things, I, I love teaching and um, being able to kind of pass pass it along, but then also kind of if, you know, um, younger actors who might be going through transitions, the benefit of my uh, sort of some of those bumps along the way, because some of those transitions were were not easy, you know, um, they, they were awkward, <laughs> particularly when you're doing them on, when you're doing them on camera, right, so, um, so anyway, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting uh, to have had, you know, done it for so long. Exactly, and then, well, one of, like, another impressive thing that you've done, you were um, on Risky Business. That is really cool. Yeah, um, I did. Uh, I mean, I was on. I, I did a. Uh, I was on my first Broadway play at sixteen, mm-hmm. um, and I I did a lot of other uh, things in New York um, before that. But when I was, as I was graduating high school, uh, so, uh, I guess I was turning turning eight. I guess I just turned eighteen. Um, literally, I left my graduation and pretty much went to Chicago, and we shot this movie. And we all thought it was going to be a, you know, just another one of those teen sex comedies, but it. It's obviously held up, and that, that Tom guy, I can't remember his last name. Um, that Tom guy, hmm. <laughs> he, he, he seems to have done okay. So, um, yeah. Um, anyway, it was, uh, we just celebrated the 30th anniversary uh, this past year, which was so sweet because a bunch of the cast and crew got back together at the, uh, um, at the film, uh, f- film Academy. So, sweet. That is very neat. Uh, you've done so many things, and then also you did um, Star Trek Voyager. How would you like working on that? Oh, I love that. I mean, I was a huge Star Trek fan. The original Star Trek with Shatner and Nimoy and stuff. And, and um, when I got on it, I just was just so excited. Um, and then uh, I got to work uh, with some really, really wonderful people, Ethan, and, and um, uh, I worked on Voyager, so I, I did about six episodes of that. But uh, I, that was really fun. And then, you know, incredibly, of course, Star Trek is 
I mean, I got more, I think, fan mail from Star Trek than maybe anything I'd ever done up until that point. Right, yeah. So do you get recognized now out and about, like, just for all these different shows and everything? Do people recognize you very often then? Yeah, a lot of times people say, you know, hey, can I go to school with you? Or <laughs> how do I know you? You're so familiar. Um, uh, or people sort of stare at me, kind of like, how do I know that guy? I know they're not saying anything. Uh, you know, now with Once Upon a Time being so uh, successful, there's more, um, there's more kind of, I think, awareness of me through that. Yeah. I get stuffed a bit more than I um, but, but if people, and that's what I'm sort of saying on Twitter when people sort of say like, oh my God, I didn't realize that Rafael Sparge was in the Cosby show or he was in, you know, uh, he was in, you know, I don't know what, um, any number of other shows that they sort of say like, oh, and Castle and this and that. And, and it's a funny thing. So suddenly all that old work then kind of gets rediscovered in a way. I mean, I was just chugging along, chugging along. And, and of course, this enormous show came along and, and, um, and it's been, you know, it's, it's been an amazing, an amazing experience to be a part of because it sort of, um, I don't know, it's just sort of created, a, you know, much more awareness of kind of me and I guess my work even going back. Right, and speaking of like all this awareness and like fans being, taking notice, how has Twitter and Instagram and all these social media sites helped you um, as an actor being that they can talk to you anytime? You know, it's great. I mean, the, the, um, the only thing about it is just that it, it can take a, a bit of your time. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a little bit, it can be a little bit intense. Um, but um, I, you know, I, I'm not on there all the time, but, but I, you know, I, 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 obviously it's been uh, really gratifying. Um, one, one of the most gratifying stories was one day where um, uh, this, this video game I did called Mass Effect, um, there was a letter in one of the games that was never read, and one of the fans asked if I would read it, and so I kind of did it on my own. I kind of put it out bootleg before Thanksgiving, thinking I would just kind of slip it out. Uh -huh. Um, and the Mass Effect fans are just enormous. I guess they said Mass Effect is kind of like the Star Wars of video games. Um, uh, th th I'm not a, I'm not a gamer, but th that is what I've been told um, by by people in the know. And um, anyway, what happened was that the, the the letter that I read went viral, and it went literally all over the world. And then people began, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of responses. Um, oh my God. Uh, uh, and, and then they found out that I uh, run a nonprofit called Greenwish, that's an environmental nonprofit. And then people from Poland and and um, Russia and uh, you know uh, Canada and New Zealand and Australia and I mean Paris started sending donations just to say thank you to to Greenwish. Um, uh, I mean literally by PayPal from all over the world. It was it was just incredible, and it was sort of the power of social media. Uh, put out in the, such a wonderful, or well, you should use the expression, organic way, um, and and uh, it was it was pretty magical. I mean, I, I obviously from uh, the way the world is now, um, producers and studios and and um, and people that hire you, you know, they they look to how what your social media profile is like. Mm -hmm. um, they they want to see that you're engaged with your fans. Right. It, it has become the uh, uh, a thing that, you know, one has to do. Yeah. And so, but from that point of view, I, I feel like it's a real, um, uh, you know, it's just another thing that we take on as actors. Um, generationally, I, I know people who are older than I am who, who have, have not quite got, like, I don't get it, why are we doing this, it seems so silly. Um, but, but there's an immediacy um, and, a, and a joy that I know the fans take and be able to kind of tweet and be able to get a response. And um, I, I, I really enjoy it. I really enjoy it. Right, and if you think about it, Twitter and all this stuff wasn't around years ago, and you think, how did people connect with, like, these celebrities and actors and just be able to talk to them? Like, the only way was just, like, fan mail and stuff like that. So it's just amazing what the world has come to, you know? Uh, totally, totally. I mean, it, it's so immediate. Yeah. Definitely. Well, it's yeah, it's good to see Twitter, too, um, can also have a positive effect, being um, that it did help Greenwish. You know what I mean? Just like all these people, it really gets the message around. So. Yeah, it, it, really, is, it really is lovely. It really is lovely. Um, uh, and, and, I, and I'm so um, um, I'm amazed how ideas, how fast ideas travel and, and how, you know, where people tweet from. 
you know, uh, from South America. So many, the huge following of Once Upon a Time in Brazil, huge. I get so many tweets from Brazil and, and, and um, you know, from Russia and Korea and Japan. And it's, it's in, you know, that's the other thing about Once Upon a Time is it, it is because it's based on fairy tales, not all American entertainment travels well, right? I mean, comedy obviously being the thing that travels the least well. Right. But this um, this show um, has traveled, you know, very well. And again, I think because of the kind of the universal language of fairy tales, um, and and people are are really emotionally involved in these in these stories. Exactly. It's good to see that it's like universal like that. That's great because what what a good show it is that I wouldn't pick anything else to be like this. You know what I mean? So that's great to see. Yeah. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, and, and are you, um, uh, what, what episode are we, what episode's aired now of Once Time? Where are we? Uh, it was just the recent episode with Zelina and the showdown, and then with, they just got rid of Neil, which was kind of unexpected, because, you know, we've been watching him for all these seasons, and then all of a sudden now Neil is no longer there. So that was kind of a shocker for everyone. Yeah, I think everyone's really having a hard time with that. Yeah. 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 So that's where we're yeah, currently. Yeah. We're kind of at that point just waiting for that. And then Rumpel to get back to normal at this point because he's being controlled with Selena with the dagger. So. Right, 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 right. Oh, gosh. Oh, you have so much exciting stuff ahead of you. I know. Oh. <laughs> wow, I know. I can't wait. Uh, I, just, ju- I just came back from finishing the finale um, just last week. And, oh. uh, wow. It ends so beautifully. Wait till you see. It's, it's, really, it's really cool. It's really cool. Really okay. funny. That's really good. Funny. We really like when the show goes our way. <laughs> Everything we want to happen, when that happens, that's good. That's good. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think, I think you'll be very pleased. Okay, good. Good. This is exciting. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. And then we had another, like, an environmentalist question for you real quick. Um, a, a topic at hand is uh, disappearing bees. How do you feel about this? Do you think bees are really disappearing at the moment? Well, what we hear is that bee, bee populations are collapsing uh-huh. um, and, and, and at an alarming rate. Um, and and uh, this is what we hear from scientists um, as it relates to um, the trends they're seeing. I know that there are, um, you know, obviously a lot of the pesticides and, and, and chemicals that are used to keep pests off, that is, to pre- preserve the, the crops um, on the one hand, um, on the other hand, are have a have a maybe uh, not so not so good effect on um, on the on the life of bees, and also then in terms of kind of the um, uh, you know back at the hive, as it were. So um, it's one of those things where I you know the data is, is it can be a little alarming, frankly, um, uh, because we are so dependent on our on our food supply for bees to be able to essentially uh, pollinate crops in order for them to be able to, uh, you know, for, for, for them to work, <laughs> right. you know, the, the pollen. Uh, so so um, there are people who are taking, you know, uh, taking this as a, as a, as a cause and, and are doing numerous things, whether they're actually sort of trying to fight for uh, a reduction in some of the pesticides, some of the chemicals that are being used, or they're actually sort of also, um, uh, you know, becoming beekeepers. And, and that's pretty pretty exciting uh, um, in terms of, you know, being, being your own beekeeper as well. So, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 there, there is, um, if one is to read a paper any given day of the week, um, a lot to get your attention. Right. And... Uh, my, my feeling is that um, we, you know, whatever you can do, and, and there are lots of different things that you can do, um, you know, it's, it's, worth, it's worth getting involved. It's, it's, it, you know, our, our, the future um, of our planet sort of depends on it. And, and I started this thing called Green Wish, which is basically a way whereby which people can get involved if they, if they feel so you know, passionately about it. I mean, basically, Green Wish is a way in which you can create a chapter in your area. It, you um, effectively, with less than about $250, something like that, you can start your own 
chapter that is working within our existing um, nonprofit, um, right in your area, making a difference locally. Mm-hmm. And then what you do is you, you through various different uh, fundraising methods, that is either point of purchase cards or events or various things, the money then comes then through to Greenwich and then goes right back into your community. 90 cents in the dollar goes right back into your community. So it's a way whereby which, if you feel so inclined, what you might be doing to volunteer for, you know, say one nonprofit, in this case, you would actually be helping five. And then what happens is you can, you get free banking from people's bank. Um, we give you all the assets and access to the website. And in other words, you get to sort of create an instant nonprofit that in this case for the small nonprofits that are local who really need the money and are doing such important work in the community, you, you bring them both money, but you also bring them awareness. And, and, and by doing so, hopefully, as opposed to sort of cursing the dark, you're actually sort of trying to sort of light a spark and trying to sort of make a difference, you know, one, one step at a time. These, these, these groups, when I've called them and said, hey, Greenwish has identified you as a recipient, in some cases, they've literally burst into tears and they said, you have no idea how much we need this money. You know, we're so grateful. You know, it, it means so much. And, and um, it, it, you know, it, it's, a, it's a wonderful way to feel good about kind of trying to actually sort of make a difference. Thank you for asking me about that. I mean, I, I'm, I'm very happy to talk about it. I mean, people can find out about it by going to greenwish.com. Uh-huh. Um, and if they want to open up their own chapter, we have people who can help assist with that. And, um, uh, um, you know, uh, in LA, we, you know, support, you know, different groups that are earth, air, water, sustainable education. We have a sort of a range of different groups and, and they rotate. So after a certain amount of time, you can actually then um, pick other groups. Uh, and again, it's all local. It's all, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, they say, they say buy local. In this case, it's give local.